You want to know why we are living in the last days? Let me show you. According to the book of Genesis, everything was created in six days. And on the seventh day, the Lord rested. So we can see that from Adam and Eve, it was 4,000 BC. Abraham is 2,000 BC. King David is around 1,000 BC. And of course, Jesus is, he splits time, zero. And of course, from Jesus' birth, all the way to the present time is 2,000 years. So if we add four plus two is 6,000 years. This means we are living on the 7,000 years. If you know scripture, the Bible says that one day is like a thousand years to the Lord, and a thousand years is like one day. And when we look at numbers, we know that the number seven is complete or perfection. This means that right now we are living on the 7,000 year or the seventh day, a day of completion or perfection. We are literally living in the last days. We are on the seventh day where Jesus' return will complete all things. You see, what that guy is trying to do is a classical example of Christians trying to say that they are living in the last days. You know, every generation believes they are the ones in the last days. And we are living in the last days, and I'm going to tell you why. But the explanation he gave is legitimate, but... How doesn't he realize that this isn't the seventh day? This is the six thousand. This is the sixth day. This is the six thousandth year. The year two thousand is not the seventh day. The seventh day would be on the year three thousand, <laughs> right? So he's off on that. But obviously we are in the sixth day. But does that mean we are not in the last days because we're in the six days? I mean we are in the sixth day. No. I know some of you will say, hold up. But from four thousand BC. Before the before Christ, 4000 BC to 2000 AD, we're in the year two, we're in the 2000s, right? That time period is only 6,000 years. So what? Armageddon is gonna come in the year 3000 on the in the on the seventh day, right? That's what you're gonna say. That means we have one more day, 1,000 more years from 2000 to 3000 to reach the seventh day. Yes, you're absolutely right. But the 2,000 to 3,000 is going to be Judgment Day. Judgment Day is not one day. Judgment Day is not Armageddon. When Armageddon comes, it's not Judgment Day. Because remember, a day to God is a thousand years to mankind. So we are in the sixth day. And Armageddon is going to come on the sixth day. So that after the thousand years, all things will be completed by the seventh day. It is not going to start after the seventh day when Armageddon is going to come. Armageddon is not going to come on the seventh day. And then all the prophecies about post-Armageddon is going to come to, to fruition. No, that will be too late. That means God has passed his time period. No, everything will be done by the year 3000. The thousand year reign, millennial reign of Christ. Remember, it's called the millennial reign of Christ. Millennial is a thousand. The thousand years of Christ ruling over the earth. If Christ is going to be ruling along with 144,000, what is he going to be ruling over? He's going to be ruling in heaven and over the earth. So the millennial reign of Christ, if he's ruling as a king and a priest and a judge, and the anointed are going to be judges of angels and mankind, then, then they are going to be judging. Judgment day, millennial reign of Christ, the thousand year of Christ, the thousand year reign of Christ, the judgment day of Christ, the judging for the thousand year period of Christ. You understand? It's all the same thing. So remember, by, by the time the seventh day comes, Everything should be finished. The devil should be locked up already. Mankind should be perfect. Everything should be finished by the seventh day because the seventh day is complete. The seventh day represents completion. So Armageddon is not going to come on the seventh day. Because when if Armageddon comes on the seventh day, that means nothing is completed. The last enemy death will not be defeated. The last enemy death should be no more by the seventh day. You understand? So we are in the sixth day. 
So that means Armageddon is going to come soon because we are in the sixth day. As a matter of fact, we have passed the sixth day because the sixth day was the year 2000. So ever since the year 2000, we have been living in the last days. Armageddon, I made a video proving that Armageddon will come within 30 years. Well, since 2019, that we subtract two years. So within 28 years, Armageddon will be here. But we are already in the sixth day. So Armageddon will come in the sixth day. And then Judgment Day will begin, which Judgment Day will end by the year 3000. But we won't be calculating the time. We're probably going to forget the time, but God is not going to forget. We're, by the year 3000 will be the seventh day. So you're going to say, but hold up. If that's the case, what well, that means that people are still going to be here for a thousand more years? Yes. If there's going to be a resurrection of both the righteous and the unrighteous, where do you think the unrighteous are going to be resurrected to? You think the, res you think the righteous are going to be resurrected to life in heaven? God is going to grant the unrighteous life in heaven? In Matthew chapter 5, Yehoshua, whom you call Jesus, Yehoshua said that there are two groups. In verse 5, he says, the humble will inherit the earth. The humble will inherit the earth, not the wicked. The wicked will be dust and ashes under our feet, according to the book of Malachi. After Armageddon, they'll be destroyed. Not even, not even a tree will be left. They will be as dust under our feet, and we will look for the wicked one, but we can't find them. You're not going to look for the wicked one in heaven. There are no wicked ones in heaven. But you're going to look for the wicked ones on the earth, but you won't find them because they're, they are dust and ashes under our feet. In verse 5, Yeshua says, The meek will inherit the earth, not the wicked. The wicked will be dead, right? And then in verse 10, he says, But those who are persecuted for the sake of the kingdom, for the sake of righteousness, will inherit heaven. So those who go through persecution are part of the anointed, the chosen. Because they are going through persecution, it is like they are now worthy to go to heaven. But if you're a regular good person and you've never been persecuted, why are you going to heaven? You understand? Christ was persecuted. He's going to be a king because of that. So the 144,000 are going to be persecuted by the devil. They are going to rule with Christ as kingdom priests in heaven because of that. But the other group, remember Christ says, but I have another sheep that is not part of this fold. But they too will listen to my voice. They too will be Christians, but they will not go to heaven. They will be humble and they will inherit the earth. So after Armageddon, the wicked will be destroyed. Armageddon is going to be on the sixth day. The wicked will be destroyed. Right? But the humble will be preserved. They will have a righteous mark and the angels will protect them on the day of the great battle of Armageddon. And they will survive Armageddon and they will still be here on the earth. Just a quick side note that I forgot to mention as I watched the video back. Look, the book of Malachi, people, people forget. Like The book of Malachi tells you, it's telling you that, listen, after Armageddon, you're still going to be here. After Armageddon, you're still going to be here. If, if it's saying that the wicked will be as dust and ashes under your feet and you will look for them, but you will not find them. That means there are people who survived who are not wicked. That's why they're not dead, but they are alive because they are humble. The humble will inherit the earth, will possess the earth, right? Someone, some group of people survives Armageddon and they are literally walking on top of the wicked because the wicked are dead and they are dust and ashes on the ground. They didn't vanish. They became dust and ashes. They're, they're matter. So they don't evaporate. They fall into the ground and become dust and ashes because we are made at, from, dust, from dust and ashes. So they come back to dust and ashes and they're walking, literally walking on top of the wicked because the wicked were just destroyed in the great day of, of, of God, the, the great battle of Armageddon. And some will look for the wicked, you know, as an expression, like you will look for them as hard as you want to, but you will not find them. And if the scripture says weapons of war will be changed into weapons of farmer's work, what? You think that's going to be in heaven? Okay, there are two groups of people. And people don't realize that the New Testament is for the anointed. It is not for the other sheep. So the message of the New Testament is for the sheep of Christ who will go to heaven. The 12 apostles are, were going to heaven. 
and the spot was so limited that since Judas lost his spot, someone else had to fill that spot. And in the Bible, it says that a meeting was held by the first century Christians through the aid of the Holy Spirit. They had two candidates and they chose who would replace Judas' spot in heaven. So the spots are so limited. It's 144,000. It's so limited that when someone loses a spot, someone else has to fill it. So when you read the New Testament at face value, you think it applies to every Christian. No. Because if it applies to every Christian, then why is Christ saying that, listen, there is another group. That this testament does not apply to. But no, they will hear my voice. Because remember, Christ says, the book of Revelation says that Christ will be given a new name that no one understands, right? But obviously, God understands it because, because God gave Christ the name. But the name represents a character. Because even the Bible, the book of Revelation says that to each to each of the of the people, to each of the anointed. Who conquers, God will give them a new, no, um, Christ will give them, God or Christ will give them a new name, I forget who. But that new name will be given to them. So that means that each of the 144,000, I made a video on this, because China McLean made a video and, and people were going against her. And I made a video supporting her. But um, the new name is not a name that nobody knows. Because the Bible, in Revelation it says that nobody knows a name. But that's not true. Because... Even each of the 144,000 will be given a new name, according to the book of Revelation. Each of them will be given a new name that nobody else knows. So what? Each of the 144,000 are going to know something that God doesn't know? They're going to know something that Christ doesn't know? No. Of course Christ is going to know it. Of course, Jehovah, El Shaddai is going to know it. But what it represents is, and in that video, I, I prove it. I'll put a link, link in the description below, too, of that video, where I prove that the name represents the character Right. So because they conquered, they will be given a new name because they went through an experience that nobody else can claim that experience. Christ went through an experience that nobody else can claim. So it is a new name. Name represents character in Hebrew. So it is a new name, new character that they they take up. But let me stick to topic. So the hundred and forty four thousand. Those going to heaven will be persecuted through that persecution, through that fire that they go through, that tribulation, they will be crowned they will they will be given a new name and they will be declared worthy like the lamb was declared worthy right to open the scrolls they too will be declared worthy to go to heaven and rule with christ as kings priests and judges over the earth but the regular christians who didn't go through the fire they are righteous too but not righteous to the point where they will inherit in corruption and spirit, spirit beings in heaven and judge angels. No, no, no. They don't deserve that because they haven't gone through the fire like the other, like their other brothers have gone through the fire, right? They are the humble. They will inherit the earth. Understand? There's two different groups of people. So I'll put the links below this video. If you guys are even gonna watch it, I doubt you're gonna watch it. I'm pretty sure you're not even gonna watch it. So I'm still gonna put the links below. And the Bible says that there will be a great rebuilding of the earth. The weapons of war will be turned will be turned into objects of pruning shears. Objects of pruning shears, which means farmer's work. There will be a great rebuilding of the earth. And the earth will become a paradise again. And God's original purpose for man to fill the earth with humans will be realized. And to have in domestication all the animals of the earth and the fish of the sea and the birds of the sky will be realized. So procreation will begin again and earth will be filled with humans just as God intended for man to do. We are made from earth. That's why our color, our color represents the earth. That means our home is the earth. But the selected few will go to heaven. Right. So Matthew chapter 5 verse 5 speaks of two groups. But most Christians want to skip verse 5 where it says that the humble will inherit the earth. And they want to go straight to verse 10 where it says that the righteous, the, per the righteous ones who are persecuted for righteousness sake will inherit heaven. So what? Verse 5 doesn't apply to us. But verse 10 applies to every Christian. Come on now.
So by the end of judgment day, by the end of that thousand years, mankind will be perfect. And the last enemy death will be destroyed. The devil will be destroyed. He won't be destroyed on the sixth day on the battle of Armageddon. No, he'll be put in an abyss. He'll be put in an abyss and he'll be released after the, the, the judgment day. And he will tempt man for a little while. It won't last even an hour. It will be like you know hour in terms of spiritual time. And many people will still follow the devil in that time in the earth. It says that those who come to battle against God at Megiddo will, num will be as numerous as the grain of sand on the seashore. That's just an expression to say that it's going to be a lot of people, not literally like that many people, no. But it's going to be a lot of people who are going to side with the devil at that time. I'm throwing a lot at you guys right now. But the video you just watched was completely accurate. But people don't realize that the seventh day, by the time the seventh day comes, by the time the year 3000 comes, everything will be done. And God will begin to create a, again in the seventh day. There will be a new creation. So because God did not stop. He just rested. It didn't say he stopped. He's always been working. He didn't rest from work because if he stops working, nothing would live. So he rested from creation. He didn't rest from work. So when the rest period ends, after the year 3000 ends, God will begin to create again through his son. Possibly even through the anointed who are going to heaven because they will be just like his son. They will all be called, become sons of the true God. And Christ will call them his brothers. And God doesn't have any brothers. He only has sons. But I'll leave it at that. It's a lot more I want to say because I like to talk a lot when it comes to God. But I'll leave it at that. Peace.